You develop a relationship in Newburyport at the Clothiers with John and Dee Dee. And then you have a plan, and that plan is for you and Atticus to hike 48 peaks. Am I right about that? Well, uh, one of my brothers was working on climbing each of the 48 4,000 foot peaks. And this is something John and Dee Dee, my friends, had done at John uh, Farley Clothiers. Uh, they, were, they, they didn't do all 48, but they were just starting on them. But I was always intrigued by their adventures. Mm -hmm. And one of my brothers invited me and Atticus to go with him and two other brothers um, to climb up Mount Garfield in September of 2004. And I wasn't sure if we could do it. I'd lost a lot of weight at the time. And Atticus and I had been walking a great deal, but I'd never really climbed a mountain. But we went with him and my other brothers. And we all struggled up the mountain. Four middle-aged Irish Catholic <laughs> boys with nothing to say to each other. Talk about dysfunction. <laughs> The only thing that came out were four letter words yeah. and grunts and groans and little seven year old questions saying, how much further? Are we there yet? And hating the fact there were no views and it was hot and sticky and there yeah. were bugs and yeah. cramps. Yeah. But when we got to the top, we realized the only one who hadn't struggled was little Atticus. Uh, and he was sitting off in the distance looking off. And by the time we stopped gasping, we get to the top. And if you go to Mount Garfield, it's, it's in the northern part of the Pema Juasa wilderness. And to your right is this beautiful string of Franconia Ridge and off in the distance the Osceolas and over here is the twins and the bonds and it's like an amphitheater and down below you this great sweeping lawn of forest below you it looks like a beautiful green blanket and it was a perfect day and I couldn't believe something so perfect existed so close to Newburyport and I fell in love at that time I quoted Robert Frost saying something about you know you're reading something great because at that moment you read it you'll know you'll never forget it and I remember seeing that and saying I will never forget this moment and um, watching Atticus look off in the distance and taking in the views and not sitting, not, not moving anything but his head and his eyes, just sitting there. And one woman said, he looks like a little Buddha, the way he was sitting there. And other dogs on the trail, though, they have a great time. They run back and forth, have and go side to side into the woods, chase after this, chase after that. They do three times as much hiking as people. And they get to the top, they're looking for food from people and they're begging. Yeah. Not him, he's always like constant 10 yards ahead of me. And if I stop, he stops in the trail. But when we get to the top, he just, he found this serene place, a very peaceful place. It's a wonderful part of the book, that family hike story and what happens, by the way. I really very, very much enjoyed that. You and Atticus do start hiking, and you say that when the two of you are in the mountains, you change. Well, after I did that hike with my brothers, throughout that whole winter, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And I kept thinking about it, and it was very mythic dreams, and I wanted to do them. But I said, how would you do this 48, and how can you walk 18 miles or 23 miles? And they're all different distances. And I have a fear of heights, so that complicated <laughs> things. But I couldn't help it. And I, the next summer, Atticus and I went back and said, see how many we could do. And we did all 48 in 11 weeks. And we wow. did change. It was decompression to the max. It was every time you walk into the woods, it was like going to C.S. Lewis's wardrobe. You go through the back. And you push through the, the trees and you're away from the cars and you're away from the phones. And even back then, in the 2004 cell phones still weren't as like they are now, as crazy as everywhere. So you have this great privacy and oftentimes we didn't see anyone for hours on end, if at all. And you like that the best? At first it scared me. Yeah. There's a bit of a nervousness to it because I'm not used to it. Yeah. But then I loved it and I loved being on our own. Everyone says, what's your favorite peak? And I said, wherever we can be alone. Because how often you get to a place we, you're not really in danger, but it feels sort of nervous and exciting to be there and because you're on your own, you're not used to it. And you find it to be therapeutic. Incredibly therapeutic to the point where we, you know, a friend of mine, Parker Jones, is a therapist back in Newburyport. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, this is what it must be like going to therapy with Parky, but for, not, for 90 minutes, this must be like a year's worth of therapy going on one hike because you're working up the mountain, you're, you're getting more and more tired, it's hard, you're cramping, you're sweating, and sometimes you're like, why the heck am I doing this? But by the time you get to the top and you see the views, you've worn everything off, and the old Catholic in me says, you know, you've paid your penance, and now you're having communion. And you see the views, and you look out, and what I compare to, like, the face of God, this incredible feeling, and that sense of awe that I used to see in my father's face would come on my face, and I could feel it, and, and the Atticus, too. 
Can you imagine, though, the people that you do see, the other hikers, and they see Atticus, this 20-pound little dog, in the lead, leading you up the mountain, and here you come, as you just described yourself, huffing and puffing along, trying to make it to the top. What do they say? What do they think? At the time, uh, so different now. Now they say, is that Atticus? <laughs> yeah. And I say, no. <laughs> it's not, it's but far... they don't remember your no, name, no. do they? Atticus, <laughs> no. they do. Uh, it, was, it was strange. People would make all kinds of comments. I bet. Uh, you you know, they typically see a bigger dog hiking. Right, a lab. That. A lab or a husky or something like that. And here's this little 20 pound miniature Schnauzer and taking it all in and, and you know, some guys would make fun of him. Oh, that's not acceptable. No, <laughs> you, you know, again, you can say anything you want about yeah. me, but don't say anything about my mother or my dog. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and one fellow on top of Mount Moose Lock was going on and on because he had two big dogs and all his buddies were there and they had beer they were drinking. Oh. And he said, does that little dog really make it up this mountain? Did you have to carry him at all? How much did you have to carry that little, that little dog, that little girl dog? And I said, it's, it's a guy dog. And he said, no, little dogs are all girl dogs. <laughs> I said, well, I had to lift him once in Mount Washington last year when we were climbing in the winter. He said, he climbed Mount Washington in the winter? I said, a few times now. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the undertow still, of that. <laughs> I have embraced this wonderful, peaceful life up here, but the undertow still exists within me. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.